So 2 Peter chapter 3, I want to read verses 3 through verse number 9 for about 15, 20 preacher's minutes. <laughs> Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Okay, that was about the scoffers, right? They said, when, when, when is Jesus coming back? That's what they were scoffing. A scoffer is somebody who mocks. Okay, somebody who criticizes, who mocks and makes fun of or makes light of or taunts you. Okay, scoffer is somebody that would taunt you. See, uh-huh, uh-huh. That kind of person, uh-huh, I thought this. Uh-huh, you said this. Scoffers were going to say, uh-huh, you said Jesus was coming. Those church folks sing about Jesus is coming and the world, you know, you know it's going to rain. It won't be water but fire next time. Uh-huh. It's, 20, it's 2013. Uh-huh, Jesus was supposed to come back in 2011. Uh-huh. Scoffers, right? That's what they do. But then he says... But beloved, ooh, look at this. Be not ignorant of this one thing. Pay attention, people of God. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is what? Long-suffering to usward not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This morning, for a few moments, I want to talk to you on the topic, the reason why God waits. The reason why God waits. Uh, this, this, uh, this week, we've been talking about the attributes of God in the adult class for the VBS. And when I say the attributes, why don't you repeat that? Attributes. We're talking about the characteristics of God. We began by talking about God's supreme characteristic. God has a foundational characteristic, a fundamental characteristic. We, everybody thinks they know God because they sing about him, but it really, if you try to know God apart from where he reveals himself, you, you are subject to recreate God in your mind. So the person you're calling God is not God, it's a figment of your imagination. So you can make your God do anything and say anything and, and be anything you want him to be if you try to know who God is apart from where he reveals himself. In other words, God shows us who he is in his word. If you try to know who he is without the word, you, you subject God to your human imagination. And that's why there's some people that believe that God accepts anything because they, they didn't get that from the God in the Bible because the God in the Bible tells you who he is and he tells you how he is. His supreme fundamental characteristic, the supreme fundamental characteristic of God is love. And write that down, write that down. The supreme characteristic of God is love, okay? We tend to look at God's ability as his supreme characteristic and we confuse God's ability or capability with his characteristics. But there's a difference between God's ability and his character. There's a difference between ability and character. Just because you play basketball well doesn't mean you're a nice person. It's very possible to preach well and be a nasty person. 
character and ability are not one and the same. As a matter of fact, the majority of people that we admire because of their ability are afraid for us to get to know them because we might find out that their character is incongruent with their ability. Meaning they can do this very well, but their attitude stinks. Have you ever met anybody who had great ability but poor character? They do it well, they sing well, they preach well, they dance well, they do whatever well, they talk well, they, 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 they are very skilled in their trade, but when you get to know them up close and personal, they lack integrity, they lack values, they lack, they lack uh, uh, goodness, they lack morals. So we tend to look at God's ability and sum it up his and sum up who God is based on what he can do. But it's not about we don't worship what God can do. Do you understand this? God is good, but we don't worship what he can do. Okay, and some of us need to check our worship because we spend a lot of times worshiping what God does. We're not supposed to worship what he does. We're supposed to worship his character. And so that being said, there are a lot of us that know a lot about what God does, but really have low respect for his character and more respect for what he does. And his supreme character is love. God is love. First John chapter four, verses seven and following, he says, God is love. He that loveth is of God. So this means that a person who says they are of God, that they have God living in them, can't be a hateful person because God is love. You can't say you have God and you have a characteristic that's incongruent with his character. Okay. The first thing God is, is love. Love is the motivation for everything he does. Everything he does. Love is the foundation. For God so loved the world that he gave, okay? So we talked about God being love, and if we're children of God, we're going to have the love of God, okay? The love of God is an, un, is an unconditional love, okay? There's a whole lot of conditional love going on in churches. Conditional love. We love people based upon how they are. And then when something happens to them, we start acting funny with them. Then we hold our love for ransom. And in order for you to get my love, you got to act the way I want you to act. And if you don't act the way I want you to act and say the words I want you to say and do what I want you to do and hang out with who I want you to hang out with, I'm going to withdraw my expression of love to you. That is not of God, people. That is not of God. Because God is pure love, okay? The second thing we talked about, we went on and we talked about the omniness of God. Everybody say the omniness of God. There's a hotel here called the Omni Hotel. And the reason why it's called Omni, that word Omni, it means all. What does the word Omni mean? The allness of God. God is everything. He's all everything. God is everything of all that he is and all of everything that he is. And that's hard to fathom with the human mind, but it simply means he has everything we need. He has everything we need. He can do everything we can imagine because he's omni. We talked about that he's omniscient, that God is all knowing. Okay, that means he knows it all. He doesn't have to find out anything you know and people used to say when God find out that's bad theology there's nothing that God can find out (laughs) it is impossible for God to find out now us is a different story but God cannot find out a God who already knows can't find out right not only does he knows know what what's apparent to us because we know some things. David said in Psalms 139, thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. But we know, we know. If you're married to somebody, you live in their house with them, you know when they go to bed and when they wake up. But then David says, you know my thoughts are far off. Do you know what that means? That means God knows what we think before we think it. You need to know who we worship in here. That means that God knows what we think before we know what we're thinking about. Amen? That means God knows that at, at 11.45, some of y'all are going to be thinking about which restaurant you're taking your daddy to. He already knows. Okay? Because he's omniscient. 
That's the omniness of God. He's not only omniscient, but God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Now, we, we, you know, people say that and we, we minimize that, but I don't know if we understand that. That means that he sees who's breaking in your car right now. Because he's in here and he's at your car. Don't move anybody. I was just an example. <laughs> just an illustration. Right? But it also means that we shouldn't have to worry about anything. Wherever we're going, he's already there. And let me say something about the omnipresence of God because some of us act a little sterile as Christians. And we say, I'm not going to go over there. I'm not going over there. I'm not doing that because that's nothing but God. You know, there ain't no God over there. And some of us, you know, well, I'm having somebody. We won't go to birthday parties. I don't know what they're going to be doing. And I'm a Christian and that and that and the other. Let me tell you something. God is at that party. God, is at, God was at the club last night. Some of y'all looking like, oh, is he blaspheming? No, I'm not blaspheming. I know God was at the club right now because he had to protect you last night while you were at the club so that you can leave the club and be here this morning to fill out a card. If God wasn't that, I thank God he's at places that seem like a Christian shouldn't be. Because you got kids that go to those places and you want a God that can protect your kid when he's at home with you and protect your kid when they doing something they ain't got no business doing. Omnipresent. He's the only God that can leave from where you left from with you, escort you to where you're going, and be where you're going at the same time. He's where you're going. And he's with you as you're going where he is where you're going. What a God we serve. Do you see how awesome God is? He's not only omnipresent, but he's omnip omnipotent, omnipotent, omni all powerful. That means there's nothing God can't do. Okay? Understand that. He's sovereign. Say that word, sovereign. That means that God has carte blanche to do whatever he wants to do are you understanding and if he chooses not to do something or if there's something he can't do it is because he subjected himself to not being able to like God can't lie but it's not that he can't lie because of ability he can't lie because he's subjected himself to truth and his nature is 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 against untruth are you understanding this He's sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to do. That's why we need to, we, we need to get out of God's seat and stop trying to play God and determine who's going to heaven or not. Amen. Heaven ain't yours. You don't know. You don't know. You're, right, you're not omniscient. You're not, you're not omnipresent. Amen. Everything under the ground is God's business. A lot of us get worried because we were taught a theology that, you know, the heaven, hell, this, that, and the other, and the person. But what we, what we forgot in our theology is we forgot that we are not the judge. God is not going to call for a committee on that last and final day to come and determine who enters into the pearly gates. It is not your decision. God knows. God knows. And when we, whenever we learn to get out of God's seat and let him be judged and understand that he's omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, then we'll stop worrying about who else is going to make it and try to make heaven our home. Okay? That's the, that's the omniness of God. And then uh, we talked about the long suffering of God. We're going to come back uh, to in just a moment and just uh, give uh, some uh, details on that. Uh, and then we talked about the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. Everybody say God is faithful. You know, the Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that he's faithful. He will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear, uh, but will with the temptation make a way of escape so that we can bear it, right? That the faithfulness of God is simply the integrity of God. All of us like people who have integrity. We do. Especially when it comes to money. Are you right? Man, if I came to you and I said, man, you know what? I've been seeing you and your wife here. On, on Tuesday, I'm going to give you $1,000. I'm talking about them and some of y'all getting excited right now. I'm talking about them. Them. And it's just an illustration. If you know I'm the type of person, 
If you know I'm the type of person